All right, what's up guys? Back for another video today and we are discussing storage solutions for content creators. Everybody's different in this regard. What works for me may not work for the next person. Uh, everybody's gonna have different requirements to meet their needs. We're gonna go in here, uh, take a look at my storage rack. Uh, we'll run everybody through it and then we will actually hop on the computer, check out the user interface and I'll show you how I set up my folders, my storage arrays, uh, everything. So let's get to it. All right, so right back here behind me is my networking closet. Uh, day job, I'm a network engineer, so a lot of this stuff kind of carries over to it. Um, and some of this stuff is overkill, but my storage needs are really met by this rack. So let's check it out. Uh, we will go bottom to top. Get right in here. Uh, this is a trip lot. Man, way out of focus. This is a trip lot APC. Uh, this is essentially a battery backup for the entire rack. If the power were to go out, that would give me time to gracefully shut everything down so that uh, I don't compromise any storage. Uh, next you up is just a power strip. Uh, on the left, my kid's iPads. On the right, we are looking at a Fortinet 90D. That is a firewall for the house. Uh, RS modem on top of that, that's what runs the Comcast circuit. Uh, just to the right of that is a Philips Hue bridge. I have a couple Philips Hue lights, uh, one mainly on the back of this rack, and then some others in the office and up in my bedroom. All right, up next uh, is a QNAP 10 gig switch. These are actually 10 gig ports here that have an SFP module in them and here that are gonna run to the back of the QNAP. Uh, these two cables, one's going to run to my office in there, and the other is just going to be patched into this next switch. All right, next switch up is a Brocade ICX 6450 PoE switch, um, which is great for my home network because the APs that are like here, if I can get that in focus, the APs that are here, and then there's one upstairs in the bedroom are both PoE, so I don't have to have injectors to power them. It's one less cable. Um, and then all of these are actually patched down to the different rooms in the house. Um, and then next, QNAP TS832PX. This is an 8-bay unit that you can only see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are only six drives in the unit now. So these other two drives will leave me for uh, some expansion later on. Uh, the rack itself is a Skeletech C16UHD. I've had this rack forever. It's been through three or four moves for us. Um, and then hanging off the bottom here, just a couple of Sony camera battery chargers. Uh, so this is the rack itself. Um, I will do a little bit of B-roll here and put up uh, part numbers, model numbers, in case you guys are interested. And then we will jump straight into uh, the GUI interface of this guy, the QNAP, and we'll show you what the storage pools look like and kind of behind the scenes of that. All right guys, so let's jump right into the interface here and see what we've got. So this is the front interface you are greeted with when you log into the QNAP. Um, this is the second unit of these I've had. I outgrew an old four bay unit. Um, so just got an eight bay unit recently. Um, so let's check out the storage. So we are actually set up in a RAID 5. Um, we have a thick volume configured with 36 terabytes, at roughly 36 terabytes, 35.72 terabytes of usable space. Uh, currently we have 17 terabytes of that that's used. Uh, when I had the four bay unit, I had roughly 20 terabytes of available space. You can see I pretty much had it maxed out. Um, you can see here on the disks, uh, we still have two disks to go. The good thing about a QNAP is um, I can add these two disks at any time, reconfigure the RAID um, and add that storage pool. That'll probably give me about 10 more gigs or so of available space. Uh, because seven, base seven and eight here are not used. <clears throat> I'm not a storage engineer by any means, but this more than meets my needs. Uh, you guys can kind of see how I set up my files here. 
um, all of this other stuff. Uh, so deliverables here. I can actually create public links here. Um, this was the USA Women stuff that I shot last summer, summer before last. Uh, you can actually share, create a share link here. Um, and I'm not going to click on this because it will reveal my public IP, but uh, you can set how long you want this to be available for. You can even password protect it, create a share link, and you can text that directly to somebody as long as, the as, long as you have the ports open on your firewall. Um, so my storage here. Uh, essentially what I do is I have a media folder set up uh, set up by year um, let's look at something that I shot recently so we'll go 2021 April April 9th and eh, not a good one let's go April 17th not a good one 12th alright so what I do is I actually sort these by camera so my main shooter my main camera for photography is an A7R3. Uh, my main for video is an A7S3. So what I do is I store these in year, month, date, camera. And then see inside here, we'll have all of our pictures. And see we'll have the raw files and the JPEG files. Uh, same thing here for the video files. Um, again, it's year, month, date, camera and then videos, and you can see all of our video files there. This is extremely, extremely helpful when you're working on a shoot that has multiple cameras. Uh, if I can find something where I did, so yeah, see here's drone camera. Um, trying to find something that I shot that had a ton of different cameras on it. There's a GoPro. Um, and this also helps because I've had I only give clients, you know, like a 30-day retention policy with my with my data here as far as their deliverable link. But I've had a ton of clients come back and say, hey, we want to pay you for uh, footage XYZ. Can you edit something like that together? And I'm like, sure. I'll pull that. That shoot was December the 6th. I'll pull it up. Yeah, bad example because it was just GoPro footage. But that dis that shoot was on such and such date. I can go directly to that date, pull down the camera file, and start editing right away on it. All right, so you guys can kind of see the way that I store these files, and this has been a tremendous help uh, when I need to go back and find something or when a client needs additional purchases or anything like that. It's just it's streamlined and it's super helpful. Uh, QNAP does have a ton of other benefits. Uh, you can actually set up virtualization center, um, media profiles, there's a ton of applications that you can get on here. I don't really mess with a ton of them. It's primarily storage for me. Um, but yeah, this works perfect for my setup. Um, one other thing I can kind of show you guys. Um, where's it at? All right, so one other thing I can kind of show you guys. Uh, this is the network and virtual switch section. Um, this is what the back of the QNAP looks like. It has two, I think these are 2.5 gig ports uh, on the back and two SFPs. So we actually have these that are run to the 10 gig switch. So these are going to be two 10 gig ports and two 2.5 gig ports. Um, and you can see uh, the third adapter. Yeah, you can see right here. 10 gig, 10 gig, 2.5, 2.5. The third adapter, which is this guy right here, is our primary gateway port, because uh, that's the IP that we're actually accessing it on, 10.0.0.30. It's our internal IP. Um, so it is set up for 10 gig. So the file transfer speed on this from my Mac Mini is just nuts. I don't even have to, previous to this, I would have to actually plug up a physical drive here to dump footage, and now I just dump it over this 10 gig ethernet because it's so quick. Um, but yeah, this this machine is perfect for my needs currently. Um, if you guys have any questions about it, you want to see anything more in depth or uh, models, just, just anything about this, uh, hit me up in the comments or uh, hit me up on Instagram. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.